The girl attended her classmate's birthday party, but the boy behind her secretly poured the unknown liquid into her glass of wine. The girl was unaware of this. She was then coaxed by three boys to drink the liquid in one go. But as soon as she finished drinking, she felt dizzy and lightheaded. She thought she was drunk and wanted to go home. However, the three boys surrounded her with an evil smile. They wouldn't let her go until the end of the night. The girl walks down the stairs with her hair in disarray. The three men were laughing as if nothing had happened. The girl threw the money on the floor in anger. She stumbled back home and closed the door before she dared to cry. Ivan heard the sound and rushed up to ask, but the girl kept crying and not answering. Ivan saw the bruises on his granddaughter's legs and instantly understood everything. He kept consoling his granddaughter. After a few moments, the girl finally told him what happened. It turned out that the day she was walking home as usual, her fair skin and perfect body directly attracted three hooligans nearby. One of the boys she also knew. They lied that the man upstairs was having a birthday party and wanted to invite her to join them. The girl just wanted to refuse, but the two of them even kneeled down and begged her in public. The innocent girl had to follow them upstairs. Then the scene at the beginning of the film happened. Ivan learns what happened, pretending to be strong and helping his granddaughter back to her room. Then he grabbed the axe and left the door in a rage. He was going to chop off those three beasts. But just as he got downstairs, he ran into a neighbor. Jack saw that Ivan, who was always kind and friendly, had been overwhelmed by anger. He rushed to stop Ivan and asked what had happened. As a police officer, Jack told Ivan to calm down after learning what happened to the girl. Leave it to the police to deal with the matter. It didn't take long. Jack arrived at the apartment with his colleagues and broke down the door and took control of the three scum. The three men were so scared that they peed their pants and confessed to their crime on the spot. The police also found a lot of blood on the bed sheets. The evidence was now overwhelming. The captain was ready to take the men back to the police station. However, the police chief came to the scene. It turned out that there was his baby son here. He asked to reopen the case on the grounds of violent interrogation by police officers. Although the captain is honest, but the chief is his boss after all. So the three people in the police station to go through the process and was released. But Ivan didn't know that. He saw his granddaughter crying all day long and did not want to go out. But he could not do anything about it. He just hoped for some good news from the police. Ivan received a notice from the prosecutor's office a few days later. They wanted to settle with him, but Ivan refused to do so. The girl was called by the prosecutor to talk to him. The prosecutor asked her to tell him how she had been assaulted, but after she told the details, the prosecutor maliciously speculated that the girl had sold her body for money. His words were frivolous. The girl was very aggrieved. She went back in a worse state of mind and even tried to leave the world several times. Ivan could only keep persuading his granddaughter and promised that he would get justice for her. Just as he came downstairs, he found the three scumbags released by the police without any punishment. Ivan was furious. This was not going to go away. The girl was humiliated by three scumbags in turn. But the scumbags were released without charge. Because one of them is the son of the police chief. Ivan was not happy with the bullying of his granddaughter. So he planned to seek justice. So he took all the military medals and went straight to the highest prosecutor of the district court. The medals on his chest were proof of Ivan's achievements. He hoped to punish these three scum for his service to the country, but the chief prosecutor laughed at him and closed the file with disdain. It was obvious that he had been paid off by someone else. He didn't take him seriously as a veteran and simply said the case was unsubstantiated. Ivan fought to defend his country and got this result. He cursed the trash. Then he slammed the door in anger and left. But when he got home, he saw an envelope from the police chief with a lot of cash in it. They wanted to use the money to settle the matter. This insulting behavior made Ivan furious. He went straight to the chief's house and angrily smashed the money in his face. Since justice and righteousness could not help him, then he relied on himself to make them pay. Ivan then went to the bank and sold his old house in the countryside that was about to be demolished to get five dollars. Zero, zero, zero. When he came home again, the girl said her aunt had just come to say she was going on vacation abroad. So she left a key to the house and asked her to look after the birds. When Ivan heard this, he suddenly thought of something. He immediately went to the girl's aunt's house. He looked out the window and saw the three scum's house across the street. Ivan stared at it for a long time. With years of shooting experience, he immediately realized that this was the best place to shoot. He then went to an isolated market and found a local arms dealer. After hearing about the girl's plight, they sympathized. Without saying a word, they took Ivan to the warehouse. Ivan finally chose a sniper rifle. He tried it out and it worked great. He was a sniper back in the day 
and he got the Voroshilovsky medal, then Ivan hid the gun in the night in his sister's closet. Now all he needed was the right opportunity to give revenge. Ivan watched in secret for a few days, and found out that the three scumbags meet here every Wednesday. And today was Wednesday. He pretended to shed and went downstairs to watch his friends play chess. He waited for the three scumbags car to show up, and then he left quietly when they weren't looking. He quickly ran to his sister's house and took out the sniper, rifle he had prepared. Ivan found the right spot and pointed the gun at the three men. Ivan set up his sniper rifle and aimed at the three scum in the building across the street. But Ivan didn't want to kill them directly. He wanted them to live unhappily. The boy in the middle was holding the champagne between his legs. The moment he pulled out the cork, Ivan pulled the trigger. Then Ivan quickly picked up the bullet casings that had fallen on the ground and hit the sniper rifle. And then he went back to his friends as if nothing had happened. The ambulance arrived soon after. The crowd rallied around him. But when they found out it was the bad guy who was injured, they all clapped their hands. Because the case involved the son of the police chief, so the police chief immediately came to the scene to investigate. After he found the bullet hole, he felt something was wrong, but others said it was an accident. It was caused by a sudden explosion of a bottle while opening champagne. The commissioner saw that his son was not injured, so he did not pursue the matter further. But it was this decision that made the two remaining men let their guard down. Soon they met again at the apartment. Ivan, like last time, went upstairs when no one was looking and waited patiently for his chance. When one of them appeared, he raised his gun and aimed at the car's gas tank. As he fired his shot, the entire car was instantly surrounded by fire, and the man escaped at the critical moment. He only caught his lower body on fire. The pain was excruciating. Ivan stood calmly in the crowd, watching the action. Only Jack, a police officer's since that something was wrong because the two cases happened so coincidentally. In this case is about Ivan's granddaughter. He looked at Ivan but didn't say anything. Soon the police chief came again and found another bullet hole in the neighborhood. He was sure it was a man-made retaliation. He told his son not to go out in the future and not to go new windows. Mike panicked when he heard that someone was trying to kill him. He fidgeted and moved a potted plant for cover and closed the curtains. Two of his friends were seriously injured one after another. Fearing death, Mike was too frightened to move around on the couch. His mind also became a trance. On the other hand, Jack knocked on Ivan's door. Jack wanted to talk to him, but learned that Ivan was not at home. Jack started to look around his house. There didn't seem to be anything unusual here. Until he saw a key. The girl told him it was the key to her aunt's house, which lived on the 14th floor. Jack immediately understood what was going on. When he left, he took the key with him. A few days later, the director looked at his haggard son and decided to catch the criminal first. He took his men to Ivan's house to look for evidence, but after a search, they found nothing. The director was furious and ready to return without success. Just then, the doorbell was suddenly rung. It was the girl's aunt who had returned. She came to get back the key to her house. The director suddenly realized and immediately led the people to the her house. As soon as the director entered the house, he noticed that the window was suitable for siping. He turned to Ivan. He turned to Ivan and noticed that Ivan was sweating nervously. He understood everything at once. Now all he had to do was find the weapon that did it. Ivan's guilt would be clear. That's when the police officers found something in the cabinet. He opened it and found only a roll of white paper. Even Ivan was shocked because he knew that the gun was hidden in the cabinet. How could it suddenly disappear? Although the director did not find evidence, but he already thought that Ivan was the murderer. Just when he was warning Ivan not to harm his son, Ivan said it was too late. The chief grabbed Ivan's collar in a frenzy, thinking his son had been retaliated against. He rushed back to the house. He knocked frantically on the door, but there was no movement. So he pulled out his gun and tried to unlock the door. At the same time, a bullet was fired from inside the house. It turned out that his son Mike was in shock and had lost his mind. He thought it was Ivan who came to seek revenge, so he opened fire uncontrollably. Although Ivan escaped death, but he was confused about where the gun went. Until one day Ivan accidentally met his neighbor Jack. He saw Jack took out the sniper rifle and understood everything. Jack asked Ivan if it was worth it to do this to your house. Ivan said it's only right to kill to pay for your debt. This is life. As a police officer, Jack was stunned at first. Then he just confiscated Ivan's gun. He didn't reveal what Ivan had done. He said Ivan was free from now on. Ivan returned home and heard the familiar sound of seeing again. The girl was finally willing to let go of her pain and start a new life after Ivan's efforts. While Ivan was listening to the song outside the door, he could not stop shedding tears. In the film, 
Ivan is an old man, a widower. He is retired and hunched over with wrinkles on his face and stumbles around. He has nothing to do but walk around the street or play chess with a few old pals in the sun. He is just like the old people we usually see. Ivan just wants to be a good citizen. After his granddaughter's accident, he still pin his hopes on the authorities to solve the problem. Ivan took his granddaughter to the prosecutor and wears a medal full of medals to hear the announcement of the prosecutor's office. When he realized that what he had done was useless, his usual way of thinking and acting changed completely. He decided that shooting was a language. It was cleaner than a verbal attack. You can subscribe to Chilifield and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.